how to rough puff. Rough puff is pas brisé, which in French means broken dough, which is one of those extremely flaky, extremely versatile doughs. You can use it for a quiche, a torte, a tarte, a pie, a galette, all these things. It can go from savory to sweet, and it's amazing to have on hand. So I'm gonna show you how I make it, and how to preserve it, and how to bake it in this short video. So let's do it. There are two essential things that you will really, really need, and I can tell you enough how much you will need to keep for a rough puff. The first one is time. And that seems like an obvious one, but a rough puff needs to stay cool at all times. So if you're in a hurry, don't have the time to keep uh, going back to your freezer or to your fridge, don't do it. It's one of those that the seconds it gets warm, it kind of ruins the texture and you want to really keep it cold and take your time. The second one is a bench scraper, this guy. This is gonna be essential for most pastry, but Rough Puff is one of those that you're gonna to need to keep that one right near you. So let's get into Rough Puff making. First off, we're going to dunk one cup of all-purpose flour straight onto your counter. And into this cup of all-purpose flour, you're going to add a pinch of salt. If you wanna keep this dough savory, just carry on. But if you wanted to make it sweet, you can add a tablespoon of granulated sugar right on top of your pile. Afterwards, we're gonna have one quarter pound of butter that's very cold, and we're gonna slice it, not paper thin, but about a, a little bit thinner than a quarter inch. And then we're gonna do that with the whole quarter pound. Once that's done, we're gonna put that on top of the flour. A very essential step into making this dough is to make sure that your butter is fully coated in flour before we do anything else. So I'm just gonna toss everything together and make sure the butter is fully coated in flour. Next up, we're just gonna use our thumbs and flatten those little pieces of butter as thin as possible. Keep them in the flour as you do that. Next step, we're gonna add about between four and six tablespoons of ice cold water. The warmer your butter is, the least water you're gonna need. And the colder your butter is, the more water you can add to the dough. So today I'm about, I'm needing about five tablespoons of ice cold water into my dough and I'm keeping my bench scraper to bring the water back together. Here I'm not really kneading, I'm just cr trying to create this very, very shaggy dough. The second it gets about everything combined, which is gonna look very dry, but you definitely don't want to overhydrate this dough. And then once we have something that can be held in one hand, we're gonna do what people call in the biz, lamination. And I'm gonna keep it extremely simple here on the lamination. I'm gonna cut it into quarters and just stack them on top of each other and smash them down. And I'm gonna do that two times. Once I have that two times, I'm gonna shape my dough into a circle a flattened circle. You're gonna need your dough shape to look like what the mold is gonna look like. And for me, I'm making a circular quiche. So I'm trying to keep the shape of my dough round. So once the dough is shaped, you wrap it up into plastic, plastic wrap and you can put it in, it needs to be at least in the fridge for two hours before you roll it. But if you wanna just keep it in the freezer, it'll stay good for months. And if you wanna keep it in the fridge, it will stay good for weeks. All right, so now that the dough has been chilled for about two hours, it's ready for rolling. First off, I'm gonna flop on my surface, and then I'm gonna unwrap my dough. I'm gonna gently coat it into some flour. First step here is really fun, is when we beat it, just to tenderize it a touch. And now it's about ready to roll. Every time you roll, you're gonna make sure the dough is not stuck at all. That's where we're gonna move it constantly. Rolling pin, we just roll away. We do about an eighth of a turn every time we roll. And just go off. Don't be shy and add extra flour if it's starting to stick. If you see it starting to stick and you see it becoming a little bit too warm, it's a good time to just take a break Put it in the fridge or in the freezer if you don't have enough time. So if your dough is quite uneven, you can always do some patching as you're rolling. So I'm gonna try to fix this area here. Just roll it. And that will do the trick. So today I'm using this dough to make a quiche. I have my quiche mold nearby and I can see that this is 
a very good size. We have excess all around the dish, and that's perfect. My dough has stayed nice and cold, so I can handle it like this. And then the more floured side of the dough is the side that's gonna go against the mold. Just let it fall gently into the mold. Now that it's sank to the bottom, we're gonna do some folding. I'm gonna take the edges that are extra. I'm not gonna trim anything, because I like a lot of crust. Take those excess and just fold them on the inside. I have this here, and I'm just gonna crimp on the rim. So I'm using my thumb and those two fingers. If your fingers are sticking, just flour your hands a little bit. Why I'm crimping over the edge is because it's gonna create sort of a break, because as the dough bakes, it's gonna wanna shrink. And there you have it. A very beautiful, very simple, rough puff, ready to bake, ready to bake. Almost ready to bake. <laughs> One more time. I'm gonna thoroughly chill this dough. So I'm gonna take this whole thing, put it in my freezer for 30 minutes before we bake it. All right, so my lovely pie crust is very cold now. You can take it out of the freezer and it's ready to bake. I'm gonna get a piece of parchment paper and shrivel it. Is that the word? Crumple. Shrimple? Crumple. Crumple it up. Very much so. Like this, and now time for weights. I just got some beans. I'm using weights for pie crust, mostly because because it's rough puff that's been laminated, it would puff in layers. And what we're doing with the weights is keeping it nice and tight. So you're still gonna get that crisp, you're still gonna get those layers, but they're gonna stay super tight with each other. This weighted pie crust now is going in the oven at 375 for 40 minutes. So 40 minutes has gone by. My pie crust now is getting a little bit of color. We're gonna remove the beans. So this now is gonna go in until it's fully golden brown all the way. So with this blind bake, you really wanna take it all the way. You may think that because you're gonna cook some eggs in there for the quiche later, you can leave it a little bit soggy, you can leave it slightly underbaked, but you don't. You really wanna take it all the way, crispy, crispy from the bottom to the top. So I'm gonna put this back in the oven for about 10 minutes, same temperature, until it's got a very nice caramelization all the way through. 400 million hours later, our pie crust is fully baked. Now I'm happy with this. We got even golden brown all around, and if I were to flip it, now that's crunchy all the way. So over time, I may refer to this recipe of the rough puff that we can use for so many things. But later this week, I'm gonna show you how to use this and turn it into my mom's quiche recipe, which is a delightful, a delightful 90s classic that we used to eat for dinner a lot growing up. And we're gonna use this crust to turn it into that. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.